Welcome back to another chemistry video. I'm Jeremy Krug and we're continuing our discussion of thermodynamics and particularly thermochemistry and how we can calculate the delta H of a reaction. Now if you're following my series, my complete AP chemistry series here, we've already learned two ways to calculate delta H with bond enthalpies, that was in lesson 14, and from the inner, or the enthalpies of formation. Well today, in this video, we're learning another way to determine the delta H of a reaction. And that is by taking the individual delta H values of different reactions and adding them up. So for example, in this case here, I have two separate reactions, A plus, A plus B yields C, and its delta H is, we'll just call it X, and then D plus C yields B plus E, and its delta H is equal to Y kilojoules per mole. Now, I notice that if I take these two equations and add them up, well, let's see, I can cancel out the, B, the C's on both sides and the B's on both sides, and the overall reaction when I add these up would be A plus D yields E. So that's the overall reaction if I add them up. And guess what? The delta H of this new reaction is just the sum of the individual delta H's of those little elementary reactions. It would be X plus Y kilojoules per mole. And so this is a pretty nifty way to calculate the delta H of different, maybe more complex chemical reactions. This is something we call Hess's Law. Hess's Law. So we're going to use Hess's Law in this video to calculate delta H of a few different reactions. Now this is kind of like working a puzzle because let's say we're given these two reactions here. We're going to take these two reactions and our job is to use that data here to determine the delta H of this third different reaction. N2O4 yields 2NO plus O2. Now you might notice that the way I have these written, they don't add up. If you know nothing cancels out, they don't, these two individual equations do not add up to give me the third equation. So what I'm going to have to do is manipulate those top two equations in such a way so that they do add up. So this is kind of like working a puzzle. So we have to flip things around, maybe multiply by coefficients to make it work out. Well, to do that, one thing I notice is that N2O4, the reactant in my overall reaction, is on the left side. And its coefficient is 1. And I notice that the only place I see N2O4 is in reaction number 1 up here. And guess what? It's on the left side, and it's got a coefficient of 1. So that's a good sign. That means I probably don't need to do anything to reaction number 1. But something else that I do notice is that NO, in my third, my overall reaction here, NO is on the product, or the right side, and it has a coefficient of 2. Now notice that in my elementary reactions up here, uh, NO only appears in reaction number 2. And it's on the wrong side of the arrow. It's actually on the left side. It needs to be on the right side if I'm going to add these up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip reaction number 2. Now, how does that affect delta H? Well, when I flip the reaction, you know, by taking the reactants and flipping them to the product side and taking the products and flipping those to the reactant side, it just changes the sign of delta H. So all I'm going to have here is the delta H is going to become a positive 56.6 kilojoules per mole. So let's flip that reaction and see what happens. I'm going to flip it, add these up, flip reaction number two, and look at that. The delta H is now positive. Now, something else I notice is, I mean, and I mentioned this earlier, that NO needs to have a coefficient of 2 in front of it. Well, it only has a coefficient of 1. So I'm going to have to double reaction number 2. And when I double the reaction, you know, multiply everything by 2, I'm going to double the value of delta H. So this positive 56.6 is going to be multiplied by 2. So let's uh, double reaction number 2. And there we go. It has a delta H of positive 
113.2 kilojoules per mole. Now, if I've done this correctly, it looks like the two elementary reactions now add up to give me the overall balanced equation. And I believe it does, because the NO2s will cancel on both sides. I'm left with N2O4 yields 2NO plus O2. So now all I have to do is add up these individual delta H's to get the overall uh, delta H of the reaction. So it's positive 171.1 kilojoules per mole. So yeah, this is an endothermic reaction. Looking at the process, that, that makes sense. So it's positive 171.1 kilojoules uh, absorbed to break apart one mole of N2O4. Let's try another example. This time we're going to step up the intensity a little bit and use three reactions. So given these three elementary reactions, determine the delta H of the overall reaction. So we're going to try to take carbon plus water vapor yields carbon monoxide plus hydrogen gas. So let's analyze this here. In my overall reaction, carbon needs to be on the left side. And the only place carbon appears in the individual reactions would be in re reaction number one. And it is on the left side, and it has a coefficient of one. So that's good. I'm probably going to be able to leave reaction number one alone. Now let's look at water here. Uh, water needs to be on the left side, as we can see here. Now the only place water appears in my individual reactions would be number three. And it's on the wrong side. It's on the right side, and it has the wrong coefficient. It's got a coefficient of two instead of a coefficient of one. So that tells me I'm probably going to have to flip reaction number three. So once again, I'm going to add these up, and let's flip reaction number three just like this. And that changes the sign of delta H. It's now positive. And water needs to have a coefficient of one instead of two. So I'm going to divide this reaction by two. And that's going to divide the delta H by 2. So we're going to take the positive 43.6 and divide that by 2. And there we go. We have the water now has a coefficient of 1. And the delta H for that is a positive 241.8. Let's continue here. Uh, looks like the H2 is good. It needs to be on the right side with a coefficient of 1. And it does seem to have that. Uh, looks like carbon monoxide, CO, needs to be on the right side. The only place I see carbon monoxide in my individual reactions would be number two. And I see that carbon monoxide is on the wrong side. It's on the left. So I'm going to flip reaction number two, and that's going to change its sign from a negative to a positive. So let's see if we can uh, get that to work. Yep, so it's now positive now. And my carbon monoxide needs to have a coefficient of 1. It has a coefficient of 2, so I'm going to cut this one in half and multiply each of these coefficients by 1 half. And that's going to divide my delta H by 2 as well. So just like that. And now, if I have done this correctly, it looks like everything adds up correctly. I have some things I can cancel out. Looks like there's a carbon dioxide that can cancel out on both sides. I have an oxygen on the left that can cancel with you know, a, a sum of one oxygen on the right, you know, half and a half, like this. And now everything adds up. Carbon plus water vapor yields carbon monoxide plus hydrogen. So I just have to add up these individual delta H's uh, on my calculator, and I find that the overall delta H is positive 131.3 kilojoules per mole. So this would be an endothermic process. Positive means it's endothermic. Well, I hope you've learned how to uh, work with Hess's law here, how to manipulate these equations to get them to add up. This is almost like working a puzzle. Maybe in some way it seems like it's fun. I don't know. But uh, some people like solving puzzles. So if you enjoy solving puzzles, then you might like working with these Hess's law problems. If you learn something, please smash that 
like button, that thumbs up, and consider subscribing to my channel, especially if you're taking chemistry or taking AP chemistry. You can get the entire AP chemistry course uh, on my video lessons here. So thanks for watching. I'm Jeremy Krug, and join me again where we can learn some more chemistry together. Some more chemistry.